This is a short video about replacing a CV boot on a 2005 Skoda Octavia 2 litre TDI. Uh, I did the video because uh, there were lots of videos on YouTube showing CV boot changes but there were a few specific things which uh, I found tricky which I, I managed to overcome so I thought I would capture those on a video for the benefit of others. Anyway, the easy bit is, is getting the, the hub undone. There's a, a great big bolt which goes in here. Um, that you need to slacken whilst the uh, uh, car is, is, is off the jack really with a wheel on. You need to press the hub out so that you can, uh, you can get a big socket in there. I think it might have been a 28 millimeter, 27, 28 millimeter socket, quite large. Uh, once that's slackened, don't slacken it too much because uh, the, the, the manufacturer's manual says not to put the weight of the vehicle on the bearing uh, with that slackened too much. So you just um, break the tension in it, then jack the car and then, and then spin it off. Uh, then to uh, get the uh, hub out of the way, you need to undo the, the three bolts down at the bottom. I don't know whether you can see those under there. There's three bolts, three nuts, uh, sorry, go onto those threaded studs. They need to come off. Um, you also need to undo the uh, steering track rod end. You can see there, you'll probably need a ball joint separator just to get that apart. And uh, I also undid the anti-roll bar joint, which you can just see here, just to give me a bit more clearance because the drive shaft comes out here. Uh, I was hoping to, at this point, to, to do the job uh, in situ without taking the drive shaft right out. Um, it became apparent that that was not going to happen. So uh, what I did is I, I undid the uh, end of the drive shaft, the inner drive shaft joint from the gearbox. You can see in there where the gearbox flange is, um, to, to give me some, uh, well, to allow me to get the the drive shaft right out. Uh, one other thing, um, I used a spring compressor just to um, pull the strut up out of the way um, because it became quite tricky to to lever the lower wishbone. Um, down and off the uh, back of the um, um, main suspension there. So anyway, that was uh, what I did to, to get the drive shaft out and then that was the start of the fun from then on. So here's the drive shaft. I've got the, uh, the inner joint at this end, the outer joint at this end. This is where the boot was split. It had split just inside the, uh, the smaller of the two Jubilee clips. And it was just starting to spray its uh, grease out, so obviously time to do the joint, do the boot before the joint was damaged. Now the tricky part with all these joints is is getting the the actual joint off the shaft. The manual simply says cut the boot out of the way, and then with the the shaft in a vice, tap the back of the um, the joint with a hammer <clears throat> in this direction, uh, right on the inside of the joint, and it should slide off the splines. Well. After quite a bit of beating, it was apparent that was never ever going to happen. So looking online, I found there were various contraptions you could buy. One was a, a CV joint remover. So basically it clamps across here and then it has uh, some arms which come up here. And then there's a, a flange here and you screw in the bolt and it, it pulls it off. So anyway, I wondered, would it be possible to do this without buying such a tool? Because uh, it's a Sunday as always and uh, nowhere locally would have one. So what I actually managed to do was using the bolt, now this is the main bolt um, which, uh, which holds the hub into the CV joint and a 12mm short uh, socket, Allen socket adapter. There's a hole in the end of the CV joint and so I slipped that right in, right to the end and then basically I, I tightened the bolt in and uh, and push the shaft out because uh, this actually sits on on the end of the drive shaft. If you shine a torch uh, in the hole, you'll see the end of the drive shaft. Don't use anything smaller than this, this size because there is actually a hole, a small hole in the end of the drive shaft. So there's the risk that you'll end up wedging this into the shaft. So as I say, a 12 millimeter seemed to work quite well. I had to tighten the bolt uh, very very uh, to a very very high torque before the shaft started moving. So you will need to, to grip the, the shaft in a, in a, in a strong vice because there's no way you'll hold it otherwise. I had uh, a great big long breaker bar on the, on the socket to, to tighten that bolt in. Anyway, eventually it went and then once it's moving, uh, the joint slides off and then you can actually tap it off. Now, this is the cause of all the problem, this C-clip here. This is in an annular groove on the splines 
and uh, its its purpose is to is to clip the joint in, so obviously it doesn't fall off the end of the shaft. Now, I should have kept the new one. I, as you can see, I've, I've fitted the the new boot in the new joint already. Uh, the new C-clip doesn't look like this. It doesn't have all these grooves in it, these serrations. Now, the reason it's got these serrations, for some reason, the clip wouldn't uh, push into the groove that it's meant to, and so the outer splines in the joint have actually cut these grooves uh, in the C-clip, in the old C-clip. So that's why it was so difficult to get off. Uh, personally, I don't see why they don't still use the old circlip type, so you can you can spring them in and then just pop the joint off easily, because uh, this was uh, quite a difficult joint to do. Anyway. The problem with this happening is, uh, as you can see, bits of metal have effectively been cut out by the joint as it's come out. So you have to be very careful and clean uh, the joint out because um, you don't want any bits of metal inside your nice, uh, nice and new grease-packed joint because it's just going to wear away at the bearings. So you've got to get all the bits and pieces out. There weren't too many. Um, I just used a magnetic pickup. And uh, and you can you can scoop most of them out, and then by the time you've cleaned out the bulk of the old grease, it's uh, it's all gone. So anyway, repacked with new grease. All the bits slid on. Um, the bits in the kit. Um, this goes on first, uh, then the boot, and then you've got a sprung washer and a plastic washer. They go on the shaft next. Get them the right way round, and uh, and then once you've done that, slide the joint on. Um, tap it on so that it clips in position and you'll see it's snug up against the, the plastic washer inside uh, and then before you put the outer clip on you need to pack the inside with grease which is supplied with the joint kit uh, and then once you're done you need to, to put the two clamps on so I've got one there and then there's the larger one to go on as well and then you just need a pair of, uh, of pincers like this to, to pinch up the, uh, the adjustable part of the band so that it's nice and tight so in a moment, all I'm going to do is stick the drive shaft back on the car, bolt up the inner end, put the suspension back on, and then put the uh, the, the bolt in loosely here, um, center it all up, and then when I when I tighten this, I think it says tighten to 120 newton meters with the hub bolt before lowering the weight of the vehicle on it, um, and then uh, I think I'm pretty much done. So anyway, the key to this was the 12 millimeter. Allen key uh, bit which I put in the end of the drive shaft uh, joint and the uh, hub mounting bolt which I had to, to use to press it out. So that, that was the key to making the job easy. Without that there's no way it was going to come off by hammering it. So hopefully that will help someone else and save them some, some grief like me. Good luck!